In this tutorial video, we're going to be taking a look at for loops and incorporating them using arrays. So for loops are a count controlled loop. They are controlled with a counter and usually that counter is going to be represented with the letter I. Now you want to use a for loop when you know how many times a loop should run. If we are asking a user to enter their five favorite movies, the best type of loop is a count controlled loop, which is known as a for loop. They are often used in conjunction with arrays, and we will touch on that lowercase i again shortly and why the lowercase i is often used. Now, Arrays. Variables are great for holding data entered by the user as well as many other things. The downfall is a variable can usually hold one value. I can store a value and if I want to store another value, I'm going to have to overwrite the variable. I can't get back to the original value once I overwrite it. Now, if we want the user to enter five of their favorite movies, that means we need five different variables, right? Not if we use an array. We can create one variable as an array that holds five movies. We could do it to hold 50 movies. We can make it as large as we want. When working with an array, you can also declare the data type you want. Since we are having the user enter movies, we can store this in an array as a data type of string. But what exactly is an array? Okay, when learning arrays, it's best to learn a 1D array, which is a one-dimensional array first, and they are very common and they're very powerful. So when you're look, learning a 1D array, don't be like, oh, well, this is basic. They're very easy to understand, but they're commonly, commonly used. Now, a 1D array is essentially a list. When you go shopping, you do not take several sheets of paper. God, I hope you don't, but you don't take several sheets of paper with you having one item written on each sheet. You have one sheet with several items written on it. A 1D array is a sheet of paper with room for several items. Now we determine the size of our sheet. We determine the size of the array when we declare it. So let's take a look at declaring a 1D array and how it is different from a variable. Let's switch over and let's do that now. Let's take a look at how to declare a regular variable. So I'm going to use dim, which means dimensionalize. And I'm going to dim movie as string. And I want to maybe ask the user, enter your favorite movie. And I want to ask them for two of their favorite movies, just like this. Well, when I say enter favorite movie one, I don't encounter a problem. I can simply store that inside the variable movie. But when I ask them to enter their favorite movie two, now what I've done is I've overwritten the original value and I'm only storing the most recent value. The only way to overcome this would be to use movie one as string, dimensionalize another movie, movie two as string. But what if I want to enter 50 movies or 500 movies? Am I really going to create that many variables and take up that much space on the RAM? No, we're going to use an array. So right here, because we're going to have the user enter five of their favorite movies, we're simply going to put a five in parentheses. We are determining the size of the sheet of paper we want. This has room for five movies. Technically speaking, it has room for six movies and we'll talk about uh, why. So down here, when I say in our favorite movie one, you'll notice we have a red line. We need to know what index and that is what these numbers inside the parentheses represent is the index. So the first favorite movie, I may want to put in index one. Their second favorite movie, I may want to put in index two. So now I know where on my sheet of paper or where in my array each of these pieces of information are being stored. Their first favorite move they entered is being stored inside index one of movie. In their favorite movie two is being stored inside index two of movie. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip back, take a look at uh, arrays a little more in depth and then start using them together with a for loop. In an array, there are locations where data can be stored and these are known as its index. Remember that letter I that we looked at at the very beginning? The reason it is used with for loops is because it stands for the word index. A for loop does not 
have to reference an index in an array. You can have a loop run five times and not reference an array at all. Here's what our array would look like for our list after I enter my five favorite movies. Now, every array starts with index zero. Most of the time, index zero is going to be emitted. If I'm having the user enter the first favorite movie, and I store it in index zero, later on it can become a little complicated. If I'm saying, hey, any of your fourth favorite movie, I have to remember that that was actually stored in index three. The best way to uh, overcome that issue is to simply emit index zero. So I have not put anything in index zero and that is fine, that's not gonna break the array. I can put the first favorite movie in index one, which is Back to the Future, Index two of my movie array has Ghostbusters 2. Index three has the movie Below. Index four, the game. And index five, Coherence. So those are the five movies I'm gonna use. Let's flip back over and let's talk about how to incorporate an array with a for loop. Let's go ahead and do that now. In a for loop, we start the for loop with the word for. We're gonna do I equals, and I stands for index. So we're gonna say for index equals one, two, five. And what I'm going to do is, this is going to run one, the first time, the second time, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. I automatically increments by one each time this loop runs. So I want them to enter their first favorite movie. Enter favorite movie. Now I want them to, I want it to say favorite movie one. So I'm going to put I. I is going to represent one the first time the loop runs. Then the second time it runs, I is going to increment to two, then three, then four, then five. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do movie i equals console.readline. So what's gonna happen here is each time this loop runs, the first time I will be one, it'll say movie one equals console.readline. When it loops back around and equals two, now i is two. So this will say in our favorite movie two, and then in index two, we will store the favorite movie. The last thing we need to be able to do is we want to output those movies. So we're gonna do for i equals one, two, five, because I wanna take input of the movies, and then I need to output it to make sure it works. And all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say favorite movie, and I'm gonna put the i is, and then what I wanna do is I wanna output movie i. And then now instead of writing it five times, I can use a for loop to do this, to write it one time and it'll take care of the rest for me. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure it works. You'll notice we did not have a console.readline at the bottom of our code, but you can have your program pause when it reaches the last line by holding control and hitting F5. So now you'll notice when our program hits the last line of code, it'll actually pause. So in our favorite movie one, I didn't say inner favorite movie one. I said inner favorite movie I. But what is I represented? What does it represent when it runs through the loop the very first time? I is one, so it says inner favorite movie one. Inside the movie index one, we're gonna put back to the future. Now I is incremented to two. And now in the second index of the movie array, we're gonna put our second movie, Ghostbusters 2. Now I is three. So we're gonna put below with uh, Johnny Depp, Four, the game with Michael Douglas, and the last movie is going to be uh, Coherence. Once we hit enter, we have another for loop that's going to run five times. It is going to output movie index one, movie index two, three, four, and five by using a for loop and using I to do the work for us. So here, favorite movie one. We put favorite movie I, the first time it runs, it equals one. Then it'll equal two, three, four, and five. And this is why I admitted index zero. Because when I say favorite movie one is, I can use movie I. I don't have to use movie I minus one. That would make my code a lot more uh, complicated than it needs to be. But this is how a for loop with arrays work. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. We'll see you guys in the next video.